Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna start with our definition and our introduction to polygons, a word I'm sure you're familiar with that you probably have come across at one point, but might not fully understand exactly what it means to be a polygon. So the hope of this video is to create a nice solid foundation for you so that in future videos, we can start to look at properties and characteristics of polygons. So we're gonna start this video off with a definition that really explains what it means to be a polygon. And that definition is a closed two-dimensional shape made up of many straight lines. And there's a lot to unpack there in that definition. So I'm gonna go word by word to make sure we fully understand what it means for a shape to be a polygon. Now the first word we come across is this word closed. And that means that the shape has to be closed. It can't be open. All the sides must connect to each other. A great example that I could show you is a square. A square has four sides. All the four sides are connecting to each other and there are no openings. An example of a non-polygon were to be if I were to erase that top side. Notice that there is now an opening here. This left and right side do not connect. And this opening here means that that figure there is not a polygon. For it to be a polygon, it has to be closed. Now the next phrase that pops up is a two-dimensional shape. And that sort of should make sense to you. We're not talking about a three-dimensional shape that you can physically hold. It has no depth. It has no height to it. It is a flat shape, something that you would write on a piece of paper that we wouldn't be able to actually pick up and hold on to. So that is the first part, a closed two-dimensional shape made up of many straight lines. One of the key parts about a polygon is that it is made up of straight lines. We're not talking about circles or ovals here. For a polygon to be a polygon, it has to be made of straight lines, not curved. Now the other big word that's hiding in there is this word many. Now many is actually coming from the prefix of the word polygon, which is poly. And poly means many. And that means that polygon is, is sort of the overarching category for all the shapes that you think of. It includes many shapes of many different lines and sizes and that's gonna be our main definition for what a polygon is. A closed two-dimensional shape made up of many straight lines. Now you might be thinking to, your, of your, to yourself, okay, what are some shapes that might qualify as polygons? And I have a nice list here that shows you all the different types of polygons we could have. Now, this is not a complete list because as you can imagine, we can go higher than the number of sides we see here. But we're gonna start off with these eight. Now the smallest polygon you can have is a triangle. That's because in order to create a closed two-dimensional shape, the least amount of sides you can have is three. So a triangle here has three sides. So a three-sided polygon, we call it a triangle. Next, we move on to the quadrilaterals. And the quadrilaterals are polygons that are made up of four sides. And that includes your squares, your rectangles, your rhombuses, your trapezoids, your kites, your parallelograms. All of those four-sided shapes are going underneath that category of a quadrilateral. Now, as we move away from the triangles and the quadrilaterals, you're going to start to see a pattern with the naming scheme, specifically when we get to the word pentagon. Now, a pentagon is a five-sided shape. That prefix pent is our prefix for the number five. And as we move through each of the next shapes, you're gonna notice that they all end with the suffix gone. And that's because we just start off each name with the number of sides as its prefix. So a pentagon has five sides. We mo then move on to the hexagon, which has six sides. This one you might not be as familiar with, but a seven-sided shape is called a heptagon. Then we move on to an eight-sided shape, which is called an octagon. Again, another one you might not be as familiar with, but that is a nine-sided shape, 
which we refer to as a nonagon. And finally, we end here with this last shape shown here, the decagon, which is a 10-sided shape. Now, there are names for shapes past a 10-sided shape, right? We can get to an 11-sided shape, a 12-sided shape, a 20-sided shape. All of those are going to have special names. But usually in math classes, we tend to just memorize these eight here. And that's because to try to memorize all the different shapes that encompass polygons would be a lot of different names to try to remember. And so we actually have a nice naming scheme for polygons when we get past 10 sides. And what it is is, is we just put the number of sides, let's say I'm thinking about a 15-sided shape. Well, we would call a 15-sided shape a 15 gone. You notice that we're not using the actual prefix for the number 15. Instead, we would just call it a 15 gone, a 15 sided shape. Same thing with say, let's say a, a 27 gone. That refers to a polygon with 27 sides. And so as we get past the 10 sided shape, you'll notice that all we will do is change that n value there, the n gone, where n is going to refer to the number of sides. So however many sides your polygon has, we're just going to call it that plus the ending of gone. So you could have a 40 gone, a 50 gone, a 100 gone, 100 sides, a 195 gone. You're starting to get the gist that as we get to these larger polygons that we really don't want to be trying to draw out, that's going to be our naming scheme. Now you might notice some very special characteristics about these polygons here. And for a fact, all of these polygons happen to be what we call regular. And what regular means is that all of these polygons here that are shown, they all have equal sides and they have equal angles. Now that's not something that's always true about polygons. And unless it's specifically stated that you're dealing with a regular polygon, you can't assume that all the sides are equal or all the angles inside are equal as well. But for these eight polygons shown, I'm telling you right now that these are all examples of regular polygons. We see with this triangle that we do have an equilateral triangle. All of those sides are equal plus all of the angles inside are equal as well. For the quadrilateral, we see that all those sides are equal. And when you have a quadrilateral with equal sides, well, we call that a square because it's also going to have 90 degree angles in here that are also all equal to each other. And then as we move on to the pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, all the way to the decagon, hopefully we start to notice that all of these sides are equal to each other in that shape plus all of the interior angles inside are also equal to each other because they're regular. Regular polygons have equal sides and equal angles. Now, I'm gonna show you some examples of non-regular polygons, and we can see those polygons right here. We see we have a triangle, a quadrilateral, a pentagon, hexagon, right? All of the ones we've just seen and the previous slide, but these shapes here are not regular. We see that the sides are not all equal, nor are all the angles equal as well. So I just wanted to make that clarification on what it means to be a regular polygon and what it means to be a non-regular polygon. Remember, regular is going to refer to polygons with equal sides and equal angles. I hope this video helps clarify what it means for a shape to be a polygon. And in the future videos, we're going to start to look at the angles inside and the angles outside of these polygons. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.